an aspect of Mad Olympia that goes underappreciated in the Mad Olympia circle to me is psychology. What they mean by psychology is the mindset that you employ when you solve problems, when you practice problems, or when you walk into the contest hall itself. And the reason of this is that Mad Olympia is a test of your thinking process, your thought process. And it is such a complex thing that mentality or mindsets or psychology, they have a big impact on your performance. Think about it this way, in the IMO you have three problems in four and a half hours, right? You are meant to take an hour and a half on the problem. This should go to tell you how difficult these problems are meant to be and how complex your thought process is when you get to this level. And when you're dealing with such a complex task, mentality is already half of the picture. You cannot let curiosity lead your way if you're too fearful or intimidated by the problem and you're only sticking to what you already knew in the past. What are the most prevalent mindset issues in Mad Olympia? I think the most prevalent mindset issue in Mad Olympia to me is that there is a fixed path or fixed journey towards success that you can just walk through and get an I'm old gold medal, which there is not. You need to understand that Mad Olympia is a personal journey. It's a journey of building your thought process to solve problems and use what all you had already seen to adapt it to the unseen and find new insights. And in this journey, you have to build off of what you already had. Even two people with the same mathematical background might have very different thought processes. It's like two artists trying to become a copy of another person, which you cannot do that. You cannot establish an art school where you try to force every student to become a clone of Picasso when some people might be more of a Van Gogh person or more of a Da Vinci person. Like, you cannot create a puppet out of everyone. Everyone will have their own journey their own styles of thinking, their own insights to find. And I think this is the beauty of the Mad Olympia journey in general. Like, you have the freedom to craft your own path. So you need to use that freedom to your advantage. Find the new beauty in math instead of chasing after success and trying to copy someone else's success story even though they are clearly belonging to someone else and not you. What makes Conception in the Mad Olympia culture, do you find the most toxic? I think the most toxic idea in all the Mad Olympia culture is the idea of talent. The idea of talent is toxic because it convinces you that there is a limit to where you can go in terms of your potential. When in reality, Mad Olympia is supposed to be about finding your own heuristics, your own insights, right? It's about shaping your thought process. And the whole idea of talent is about your default thought process. You see, in fields like running or athletics, talent is a thing because it's determined by your genetics, right? Your muscle mass and things like that. But mathematics is too complex a task for genetics to really have that much of a role in your performance. And in my own view, this is not a biological fact or knowledge, but this is merely my viewpoint of what's happening. I view talent as the phenomenon where one's default thought process aligns with that task or mathematical subject. So if one person is not talented, that doesn't mean they cannot reach their potential. It just means that their default thought process is not really suited to the task ahead. Like for me, I don't have talent in geometry. I believe I have some talent in combinatorics. But geometry had always been my Achilles heel ever since my primary school years. I would die on geometry every single time in contest. But then I found some international friends who are really good at geometry and I simply asked them how they think, how they learn, and how they create connections between the points, the dots, everything in the diagram. And as I slowly absorbed that thought process, I began to find my own insights in geometry as well and right now geometry is my second best subject. It went from my Achilles heel to one of my biggest strengths. So what I would advise you is do not care a single bit about talent. Forget the word talent in the talent searches and focus only on your passion, your own personal journey of shaping how you think. How do you face the fear of difficult problems? This is an excellent question. The way to learn to face the fear of difficult problems is that you need to 
start accepting that failing is normal and it's not just normal it's the default result and solving is actually the good ending what i mean by this is that you should try to do problems that are considerably harder than the problems you do in your comfort zone give yourself like a nice session of two entire hours or something and then pick one problem that you'll be doing for that entire session you need to internalize the fact that it's okay to fail it's okay to not solve the problem because if you look at the IMO the average solve rate for problem 3 is like 5% of our contestants right we need to transition from doing problems that we are meant to succeed to doing problems that we are meant to fail one way or another and by accepting that we have to fail first to succeed to improve further and that these problems are meant to slaughter most people but you're still rising up to the challenge anyways i think this is a very good mindset to have like in my own experience i was introduced to the imo trumpets very early i was introduced to the imo trumpets back when i was still in primary school i was in grade six and what that did to me was that it gave me a breath of fresh air from all the boring computational problems that they had to grind and so i would find myself taking a break from those by attempting these I'm all sure these problems for like an entire day sometimes it would take like six or seven hours on it and still not succeed but I felt okay with that because it still feels good after failing because I gave it all that I had and I knew that my def my default result is to fail but at least I learned something from the problems and whenever I managed to fluke one of those problems it's ecstatic it's just pure euphoria i still remember the first imo problem i had ever solved back when i was 11. it was imo 2011 before which i actually did a video on that i took like five hours on that one which right now is not really an impressive feat but it still sparked an entire journey for me so yeah face your fears don't be afraid of the questions because we all start somewhere what piece of advice would you like to give to aspiring Math Olympiad students in the future? What I would like to tell Math Olympiad students who are aspiring to go to the IM or a similar contest in the future is to value the idea of freedom. What I mean by freedom is that there are actually three aspects that I want to talk about. Freedom to express yourself when you solve a problem, freedom of mind, and freedom to deviate and craft your own path. By freedom to express yourself in a problem i mean like whenever you solve a problem you should think of it as a canvas where you are the artist painting colors on that canvas rather than leaving the problem as a set of instructions that you have to follow whenever you do a problem like this you need to put your creativity to the limit you cannot be restrained by what your teachers taught you what your past experiences taught you you need to do whatever you want to that problem because you are given enough time for that and that's what the problem is asking for it wants to test your creativity it wants to test your limits right so do not restrain yourself just be yourself and do your best do whatever you want to the problem knowing that it's okay to fail and it's also just as good to succeed on that problem as far as you learn something the second aspect is freedom of mind. I've been watching movie critic videos about Kung Fu Panda 2 lately and there's one concept that struck me the most, something that people somehow don't talk enough about. It's about peace of mind, right? There's this scene where Paul was talking about how important it is to reach peace of mind and be okay as in like come to terms with his past and focus only on the present, on what he's doing. This is exactly what needs to be done when you face an IMO or when you walk into any contest. You need to forget your internal pressures, external expectations, whether failing will lead to you getting into a bad university or anything like that. You need to be free and focus only on the present, knowing that this is your journey. This is your own story to write. And the last one, talking about your own story to write is the freedom to deviate from the path that's expected of you. A lot of people would go in hearse, going to tutoring centers, going to 
run at this place, this place, this place, and walking down the same path that other people have walked down before. What I'm saying is, it's okay not to walk down those paths. It's okay to be the odd one out and pursue your own thing. Pursue your own insights, your own side of thinking. Because, firstly, you can't get to the top by being the same as everyone else. Secondly, it is a personal journey. And by personal, I mean it is different for every single person. So, do not be afraid to deviate and be yourself. Because a lot of the insights that you learn in your method Metonipe journey, it will serve you for a lifetime because it expands so much beyond math. It expands into problem solving in every single walk of life. Right now, as an as a Metonipe retiree, I find myself benefiting a lot from the insights that I've gained while I was still a Metonipe contestant, especially in terms of how I learn. So, do not try to be a puppet of everyone else. It's okay to follow them sometimes, but do not feel the conformist urge to follow everyone else at all times. Be free to deviate, be free to craft your own journey and be happy with the outcome at all times because this is your own story. Thank you.